Hello everybody and welcome to the Sim Hangar. I've just received my new PC system. So this is a follow-up video to my earlier video where I covered the steps and reasons for why I chose what I did. And I thought it might be useful to you to see what sort of performance gains I've achieved. I'm stepping up from an i7 8700K with 32 gigs of RAM, and my graphics card was an RTX 2080 Ti. In my new system, I've upgraded the CPU to an i9 10900K, stayed with 32 gigs of RAM, although it's slightly faster RAM, and an RTX 3090 graphics card. Using it mainly for Microsoft Flight Simulator, the question is, was it worth it? The reason I've done this, if you're thinking of upgrading some of your components or your PC, hopefully these results will give you some measurement in terms of expectation. I've done some comparative tests, measuring frames per second for the old system as well as the new, and covering both 2D monitor and VR mode. But before getting into the tests themselves, here are my Microsoft Flight Simulator settings. The settings are the same on both systems. And both systems have been tested with the same NVIDIA graphics driver, 466.27. My 2D settings are a mixture of high and medium settings, mainly high. The 2080 Ti being roughly equivalent to the current 3070 graphics card. For VR, in OpenXR development tools, my render scale is set to 100, and in Sim, it's set to 70. And again, my VR settings are mainly a mixture of medium and high. Ambient occlusion and volumetric clouds are both at medium as they're fairly hard on the system. These settings I found with the 2080 Ti gave me smooth performance. Now, on to test one in 2D. In 2D mode, hags on or hags off yielded exactly the same results as those shown here. No difference. The 3090 is only slightly faster than the 2080 Ti, which you would expect in 2K resolution. The strength of the 3090 is in 4K or in VR. However, when we switch to window mode, interesting results. The 30 series graphics card has maintained its frames per second, compared to the 2080 Ti, which dropped frame rate by about 25%. Optimization for 30 series cards is clearly evident here, being 50% faster than the 20 series card. By taking a look at both systems in more detail, we can see the 10900 is not working nearly as hard. I'm running at about 17 milliseconds as opposed to about 2425 for the 2080 Ti. The newer system is also using less GPU and CPU memory, indicating further optimization. This indicates the 3090 has considerably more headroom. In this test, we have hardware accelerated graphics scheduling on, and it clearly highlights the difference between the 30 series graphics cards and the 20 series. The 2080 Ti is really struggling here, whilst the 3090 seems to be taking it pretty much in its stride. For all these tests, I do have motion reprojection off. The OpenXR developer tool rendering is at 100, and in Sim, it's at 70. Worth noting here is that the CPU memory being used by the 3090 graphics card is less than the 2080 Ti, whilst video graphics memory is higher, more efficient. The message here is clear. If you've got a 20 series graphics card, well, HAGS has got to be off. To test that theory, let's do exactly the same test again, but this time with HAGS off. In an earlier video that I did, VR optimization, we found that the 20 series graphics card performed best with HAGS off, by some considerable margin something in the region of double its performance. Having just done the HAGS on test, we can see that the 30 series graphics card is not hamstrung to the same degree. The frames per second seem to be more or less the same, and we will have a look and a measurement of that shortly. What we can see here is with the 3090 and the 10900K, they're using less CPU memory. By GPU memory, it's being better utilized by almost 2 gig, running somewhere just short of 9 gigs compared to the 7 to 8 gigs on the 2080 Ti. 
We can also see the 3090 cards not turning red, as is the 2080. It's not struggling to maintain a minimum of 30 FPS. Nvidia have certainly optimized the 30 series cards, and it seems so for MSFS as well. Sticking now just with the 10900K and 3090, hags on or hags off? Rather than run through the whole test again, we're just going to have a look at the counter. And quite frankly, allowing for margin of error and slight variables, there's very little in it. If anything, I would give the edge to hags off. At a later stage, I will be pitting the 2080 against the 1390 on the new system, and we'll have a chance to look at that again. And as I mentioned earlier in 2D mode, well, it seems to make no difference at all if you're using a 30 series graphics card. Both game mode and hag should have a positive impact on the sim, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Hopefully with the upcoming implementation of DX12, we will see a change in that. Let's now have a look at a summary of the various test results. And to start off, let's talk about 2D monitor mode. Hags on or off seem to have no impact on the 30 series graphics card. For the 20 series 2080 Ti, having hags on seemed to result in a drop of around 20% in FPS. That's an unexpectedly high hit on performance. The 3090 only recorded an 8% improvement in average frames per second when in full screen mode and based on the settings that I was using, but this is not especially surprising. What was evident was the amount of extra headroom the 1390 had. It wasn't really trying that hard, and presents the opportunity to turn up the settings, no problems. And as mentioned before, I'll be doing another video where I pit the 2080 Ti against the 3090 to make the 3090 stretch its legs. We did see in the 20 series graphics cards with hags on the FPS dropped significantly and that was not the case with the 3090. And with hags on we were able to record a 39% improvement in FPS 2080 Ti versus 3090. Turning now to the VR results and here at last the 3090 started to have to do some work. With hags off recording a 39% improvement in FPS from 28 to an average of 39. Whilst in VR, hags on or off, the frame rate for the 30 series graphics card didn't vary considerably, which is not the case with the 2080 Ti. So with hags on, there was a significant and noticeable difference, with the frame rate increasing from an average of 14 to 37. Looking just at the 10900K and 3090, the question is hags on or off? Well, the answer is I need to do some more tests, but hags off seems to have a small 5% advantage. But I will be doing more tests in the future and report accordingly. Well, I must say overall I'm pretty pleased with these early first look results. And I hope they've been at least of some interest or guidance for you if you're looking to upgrade or change components. Are you looking to upgrade? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for joining me today. See you soon, take care and bye for now.